Hello everyone. In this video, I want to show you how to create fasteners, which are used typically between plastic parts. So the new thing that we have in SolidWorks under insert, not only now we have features, we also have fastening features. And mounting bus is not really much of a fastening and vent also, but the two features that we want to talk about is lip, lip and groove, and then snap hook and snap hook groove. Okay, so we can see the snap hook and its groove here on the right side, and then you can see the lip and the lip groove on the left side. So I want to show you how to create these, which are used to. Um, basically um, fasten plastic parts together, right? So uh, let's go ahead and start with the uh, hook and snap hook, okay? So here is what we have right now. And I'm going to get rid of all of this so we can start from scratch again. So what I did here, I have two parts that I made from a single uh, plastic cube and I split them, okay? And if you want, you can even shell it or anything. But here, basically, I have two parts and the top part I made transparent. So you can go to direct editing and you can move them or you can right click here and say save bodies and then save them to an assembly or anything. But right now, with this multi-body part that I made with the split, I want to show you how to create the snap hook and its uh, groove. So here we go to insert, and then we go to fastening features, right? And we want to create the snap hook. Now the snap hook needs, I want to put it on the bottom part. So before that, what you can do is go ahead and uh, hide basically this top part, right? Get it out of the way. So now it says, look, there are several things. It says, what is the position for the location of this hook, right? And uh, so here you need to provide basically a location. So if I say I want it on this surface, it says, okay, now what is the vertical direction of the hook? Give me an edge. And I say, let's say this one provides the vertical direction. Then it says along which direction the hook itself. So let's say you say along this direction, right? So you see that is the direction of the profile. If you want it to be parallel to this, you can change that and say, no, I want it along this direction, right? So you see parallel to that direction is going to be the profile of it. And then um, you can reverse the direction, for instance, if you want. Then here you can have a face to mate the body of the hook. Okay, so if you want this to go down a little bit, you can have this portion. Let me rotate it. You can have this portion to be sitting on a face or something. But in this case, I'm good, so I don't really need that. Okay, and then uh, here you can provide the dimensions. So if I move it a little bit further for you, you see these are the dimensions. So the major width of the uh, snap hook is G. The major height is basically B plus D. And the major width is basically E. So here you see that the width is like 0.2. A is also 0.2. Therefore, this back slope does not exist. And then D, you can make it as tall as you want. Look, you see? So here by changing D, can make it as tall or as, as, sh as short as I want. And by changing G, as I said, I can make it as wide as I want. Okay, so you can change the profile of that. And then what? Then you can basically uh, create a snap hook like that, right? Now, you might say, what if I want to move this location? I don't want it just randomly placed there. How do I control the location of this? Well, now that the snap hook is made, if you go underneath it, there is a 3D sketch, and that is the center point of it, which is a single point. So you can click on it and edit the sketch, 
and now you can place this point wherever you want right you can provide dimensions let's say so go from this edge i want it to i don't know be for instance half an inch and then from this edge for instance i want it to be a different distance right maybe one inch or something Okay, so you can exactly place it where you want and you can create more by repeating it, doing mirrors, a linear pattern or uh, anything that you want. But let's say for now we are just uh, work with this one only. So now that the snap hook is made, now we want to make the groove for it in the other part. So now I'm going to hide this one or not hide it necessarily, going to bring back the other part. And now on the other part, I'm going to go to fastening features and say I want a snap hook groove. Now the snap hook groove is easier. All you need is to pick the snap hook that you already made, which is this one, and then say on which part you want it and say on this one. And here there are some extra dimensions if you want for the um, basically the groove that you can provide, right? So if I just go with whatever I have, I want to show you what is happening. So if you look here, you see that the snap hook and the uh, groove are exactly having the same basically dimension, right? If I just move this with you, uh, for you. So let me move this guy a little bit away like that. You can see, right? Look at that dimension and look at this. They are sitting perfectly inside each other, but you can always go back and provide a little bit of room, right? Because most of the time that zero, uh, basically gap between them is not going to work. So we can provide this F a little bit, maybe 0.02 inches or something, right? In the wet direction and you can provide some gap in the height direction that is also a so you can provide a little bit more gap here as well and make that guy a little bit bigger than this so this one easily sits you just need to make sure it's not super larger than this otherwise this snapping does not work properly so now clearly you can see the cavity in this one and you can see the snap in this one and as i said you can make as many as you want so this is one way you can attach the parts together. The other way is using the lip and the lip groove, which is this guy. So you can see also that in many plastic parts like launch boxes or other things probably too, where there is this extrusion on this part, which we call lip, and then the matching groove on the other part that this lip sits on the groove and it keeps them together now it's not going to keep them together in the vertical direction you can easily separate them but they cannot slide in the x or y direction okay so this is for parts that you want to easily separate from each other in one direction but not in the two other directions now for launch boxes you know you typically have some latches on the outside that uh, keeps them also not moving and on one side you have pins and pivots so they can spin on each other so here i want to show you how to make a lip and groove and again what we want to do is to get rid of this portion right so here I have these uh, two objects and these objects are shelled, right? So there is cavity inside of it. And uh, I want, and I use the split. So I have two pieces, top part and bottom part. And I want to create the lip and the groove. So I go here and I say, create it for me. Now you have to say the lip goes on what, the groove goes on what. So you see here it says which part takes the groove which part takes the lip so let's say the top part takes the groove and the bottom part takes the lip and then this is a plane to define the uh, direction normal to the lip and groove so or parallel to the, to the plane on which they are made so here i can just go ahead with the top plane and now you can see that for the groove part which is the top part already when you click here it only shows you the top part 
it tells you the face that you want to make the groove on it if you want you can make a separate one and then here you have to say on which edges you want the groove so here i pick all of these four edges if you don't want all the four edges you can just pick uh, the ones that you want and then if there are gaps between these yellow lines that you see these preview lines because there is some other edge or something let's see if i can grab it if there is some gap between them you can always pick this option jump gap so if there is again some edge here uh, coming a little bit inward there could be some gap between them and once you say jump gap then it fills that gap and make sure the lip and the groove goes all over the part and now look when i go to the lip part automatically hides the groove part and only shows the lip part the face is already selection selected based on the top plane that we picked and here again i want it on all of these four edges and again you don't need to use jump gaps in this case because they are all connected and then you can provide the dimensions for the um, uh, groove and the lip and you can see the major thickness here is f really right that's this dimension for the lip or groove and their height is e so the and the other one is also a the sitting one so and a small gap between them h which is zero so they are going to perfectly sit on each other so the two major dimensions i would say are probably e and f so f is the width is about 0.1 inches and e the height is 0.08 so if you want you can make it quite a bit a taller one right and wider one by changing these dimensions but if they are good for now let's go ahead and create it so you see it's made on both of them and now i can go under direct editing and i can uh move the parts or rotate them so you can see better so let's say i want to move this guy or rotate this guy about uh this edge here and i want to go by 180 degrees so completely flip it to the other side and there we go this is the groove that you can see here and this is what this is the lip so now if you 3d print these parts they should be able to perfectly sit on the top of each other if you just add a pin on one side of them and maybe a latch on the other side now you have a perfect launch box so hopefully this video was useful to you you learn about in the fastening features the two major ones vent is mostly used for sheet metals and i covered it in my sheet metal videos and mounting mounting bus is not something super relevant for now so i'll stop the video at this point and thank you for your attention